Before we get started, this is a very controversial topic, something ingrained in people for decades. Oh, lead paint is horrible. Lead paint is the devil. Keep it away from your children. Yet those same people will keep their cell phone next to their baby all day. Doesn't make any sense. I'm 100% convinced myself the main reason lead paint was banned is because it blocks radiation. That radiation from your cell phone, router, nearby towers, smart meters, all of your neighborhood's devices. Since lead paint was still being used in the 70s and 80s, before these high radiation devices were invented, the lead paint was the only thing protecting us. It's far too much of a coincidence that they banned lead paint right before all of this new technology comes out. Keep in mind though, one coat of lead paint was probably not enough. It would have to be an older building where there were multiple five, six, seven, eight, nine, who knows, 10 layers of lead paint, which is why they demonized those old buildings. Were they the only safe ones to still live in? So lead paint was banned in 1978 for use in child occupied facilities, which includes residential homes, schools, churches, daycares, etc. One indisputable argument is the amount of lives lost to disease caused by radiation. Every modern disease has environmental radiation as a catalyst as it greatly increases oxidative stress and reduces organ function. If all of our houses were covered in enough lead paint to block radiation, hundreds of thousands to millions of people would not have suffered from radiation-induced diseases, including cancer, diabetes, heart disease. Your individual health will dictate your tolerance to radiation, how much toxins are already in your body, things as simple as were you bottle fed or breastfed. This is the biggest secret. No matter whose YouTube channel you watch, whatever social media influencer, they will never talk to you about EMF radiation or energy because it is what keeps them ahead of the masses. The masses are too naive to even think about how their cell phone works and if that energy can be used and manipulated in different ways. Let's jump into some logical inconsistencies. Leaded gasoline wasn't banned until 1996. If lead is so dangerous, why did they wait 20 years before saying that inhaling lead fumes at the gas station or while driving is bad for you? Now, if you didn't know why lead paint was banned, the reason they used is because Children, babies were eating the paint, but that's ridiculous. It's like saying you shouldn't wash your clothes because the kids might eat the Tide Pods. And I think if a child eats paint, <laughs> they're gonna have many issues outside of lead poisoning. The government is actively poisoning the public, including babies, whether it's what they come with at birth or what the water and food supply is polluted with. Have you seen what's in baby formula? Like, they ban lead paint, but they're putting that crap in baby, they're putting iron filings in baby cereal, but lead paint is not, <laughs> painters did not report toxicity. When applying the paint years and years ago, there was no widespread respiratory or toxicity issue, and we'll go into that a little more later. Government agencies still use lead paint, only the regular public do not have access to it. And I found that out trying to source lead paint myself. Oh, we can use it as government officials, but no, you as the average homeowner cannot use lead paint. It is banned. Miscarriage rates and childhood cancer have skyrocketed, which the government has done an excellent job of hiding the statistics of, but I've heard that it's around 30%. How is it possible that one in three children are not brought into this world because of our environmental Solutions. Point is, with these logical inconsistencies, they want you and your children sick. It's very evident. So, why did they ban lead paint if they're doing all of these other things? Someone please explain to me. If they're poisoning us with fluoride and chlorine in the water, why are they trying to help us by banning lead paint? Not only that, they didn't tell you what other sources of lead you might interact with. Soil. Do your kids go outside and eat dirt? Seems more likely that they would eat dirt than paint, to be honest. Also, food grown in that polluted soil, the peas and carrots being fed to your child, could have lead in them. Are you checking if 
the baby food, I mean, you shouldn't be feeding peas and carrots to your child, but are you checking if the baby food company is testing for metals like that? Drinking water. They don't seem to care about removing the lead in the water in Flint, Michigan, or lead in the water anywhere, because that lead is not lining the walls, protecting them from the government's radiation. Hmm. Old cookware, uh, not as big of a problem, but certain things, I think pewter, are made from lead. Government hasn't said much about that. Hazardous locations. Um, in New York, I think Rockland County, which is kind of close to the city, uh, was known for some sort of like toxic area and a lot of people are getting cancer. But the government doesn't tell you or warn you, oh, if your home is located near businesses, demolition sites, mines, recycling facilities, there are heavy lead pollution concerns as well as many other toxins. It's crazy to me that the government has pinpointed this issue on lead paint, children eating paint, as opposed to all of these other potential issues. And there's even more that I didn't mention here. Now, is that really the issue? Should we say the only possible problem with lead paint is a child eating it? Has that ever happened on a large scale? I could only find one case study of a child with pica, which is eating soil because they're nutrient deficient, they're not getting the right food for their body, and that child happened to eat lead paint, a lot of it, and the outcome wasn't that great. I mean, was he in a low-income area, not being supervised by his parents in a horribly old and distraught building? Maybe, who, who knows if it was true or not. But babies should not be eating paint regardless of whether it's lead or not. So as most people know, lead is incredibly heavy. It's a metal. It's not going to release into the air after being mixed into paint or chipped off the wall on like a normal scale. But there are many other chemicals in paint that are also toxic, which shouldn't be inhaled, that the government doesn't talk about. Regardless of whether there is lead in the paint or not, a painter should be wearing a mask, respiratory devices, have a lot of ventilation to ensure minimal inhalation of those chemicals. The real problem, and my understanding of the danger of lead paint, is removing it in a commercial application, which is done with blow torches. And the main case studies I could find were specifically from workers doing lead paint removal when they took off their respirators and other people were removing it and also certain professions that use a lot of lead, like pottery. But those are very rare cases of toxicity where proper precautions weren't taken. I mentioned earlier, the government uses lead in certain commercial applications not really known to the public. A more common example is its use in hospitals, every single hospital, x-ray rooms, private patient rooms. You know, are they putting you in the giant room where everyone is getting fried or do they give you the rich person treatment and put you in a room that has lead walls? There's so many building materials available, you could just Google it. Lead plywood, lead drywall, lead doors, lead bricks, lead curtains. You can even buy glass that has a lot of lead in it, enough to block radiation. Hospitals, allegedly where the most vulnerable people are, have the highest use of lead out of any commonly visited building. So they want their doctors and nurses protected from hospitals because they're relatively high radiation environments and those people are the cogs in the machine of Big Pharma, but you can't have this lead in your home because you need to get sick from radiation so that you end up in the hospital. Go figure. Now the reason I started looking into this was because lead is the only affordable way to kind of shield your home from radiation. There are certain paints and things you can buy, but they cost thousands and thousands of dollars. And the average person can't afford, you know, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten thousand dollars to buy enough nickel or, or different types of metal to shield their home. Lead, on the other hand, is very affordable and it's very effective at blocking many types of radiation, not just radio frequency radiation. So in the future, I might get some lead powder that you guys can get on wifishielding.com. In the meantime, uh, we do have some other ways that you can shield yourself. And if you do want to buy that paint from other companies, it's just, it's just way too expensive. It's like $500, $600 just to paint one room. So maybe we'll get uh, some type of lead in the future. I mean, alternatively, I could have gotten a more expensive metal that's way more, but um, again, even those more expensive metals don't have 
the same radiation protection properties as lead. So, you know, it's, it's really the only decent option. So let me know what you guys think, you know, how this kind of comes off from, I guess, a perspective of someone who hasn't done a lot of research on this. But you guys can go to frank to support me through all of my businesses. Please drop a like on the video, leave a comment down below, subscribe so that YouTube can unsubscribe you next week, and be sure to check that notification bell so they don't notify you of my videos. Therefore, as I said, frank to support me through all of my businesses. Mm -hmm.